Hey guys, Gotham Geek Girl here and let's talk Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which is out in theaters on Friday. While I really wanted to like this movie, it was far less satisfying than the first movie and kind of lost the charm and spark of what made the first movie so special. While the first Shazam! was a super fun movie and it set itself apart from the darker tone of the rest of the DC Universe, it still offered audiences the perfect balance of horror, comedy, and heart. However, it still had compelling villains and actual ramifications. While the original story sparked genuine excitement with the introduction of the boy hero, the sequel falls completely flat, with the less resilient hero and boring and bland underdeveloped villains. There were no elements of realism and it was a very predictable formulaic story that felt joyless. It stars Zachary Levi, he's a title character, alongside Asher Angel, who stars the um, younger Billy Batson, the human alter ego. Whenever he utters the word Shazam, he's struck by a magical bolt and calls upon the heroes and gods of various mythologies, transforming into the buff Zachary Levi, the adult-sized superhero. In the first film, he went up against the evil villain, Dr. Fadi Savannah, who was played fantastically by Mark Strong. He was a very well-developed and compelling villain who I would have liked to see more of in the DCU. This time around, Billy Batson and his fellow foster kids are still learning how to juggle teenage life, going to school, and their superhero alter egos when a vengeful trio of ancient gods arrive on Earth and they want the stolen trident and Shazam and his allies to fight to keep their superpowers and for the fate of the world. So Fury of the Gods, it's far less satisfying than the predecessor. The sequel feels far too messy, bland, and unfocused. While it retains its goofy charm and heart and the lovable characters, it just kind of feels like another safe step for DC to develop the DCEU and it fails to ignite any spark. Their corporate sponsors galore, overly done annoying product placement and WB references literal Harry Potter ripoffs. The sequel presents us with a story that's messy and weightless, only to showcase loads of wonky CGI, declaring itself to be a major popcorn movie which is targeted at children, like definitely at children. While there were some really great one-liners, a lot of the jokes didn't hit, it felt overly campy and it's a straight up PG movie. I know moms that said six year olds they took to watch this. Secret Headquarters was far more enjoyable, even with a childlike tone and audience. But let's talk about what worked. All the accolades all go to Jack Dylan Grazer and Digimon Hanso. They were the absolute highlight of the entire movie. Grazer gave outstanding performances. He hit all of his emotional moments and he far outshined his brother, Teen Billy. All the best parts of the film are undoubtedly whenever Jack and Digimon are on screen together. Hansel steals the show in any role he's in and he had perfect comedic timing. I loved watching those two. Billy Batson was underutilized, pointless in his own movie. Even Levi, the super Billy, he was far more sillier than Asher and Asher just gave a very one note performance with his few lines. I did, however, like the individuality of the kids and their specialties, especially the focus on Pedro coming out as clear and Darla, they took a look at her and her autism. The team of heroes go up against the daughters of Atlas and they're here to retrieve their magic and reestablish the realm of the gods. While there's top-notch casting, they're very poorly executed and boring villains. The staff from which they got their powers was stolen by the wizard from Atlas and his powerful daughters, Hespera, Helen Mirren, Calypso, Lucy Liu, and Anthea Rachel Ziegler would like to take it back and they plan to annihilate the world. Marin stands out far more um, of the three sisters. She brings a demanding presence of superiority to her role as an arrogant demigod. She does her best at the age of 77 to physically be a super villain. Spoiler alert, the youngest sister Ziegler, who you can spot from a mile away, she's basically a reality twisting mirror of Doctor Strange and his powers. Lou is a threatening tyrant who wants full control and she doesn't get the script or the, sh or the shine that she deserves. The movie also tries too hard to appeal to teens with the overuse of words like flex and fam. There's poorly done fight sequences, it's bland, it's repetitive, the humor falls flat. The third act is kind of a mess. Nothing feels real, it's like a completely CGI filled final act. Too many things made no sense realistically. How do they empty out the city? There's no ramifications, no realistic states, no element of realism. The monsters turn into paper mache. They really saved everyone off of a bridge. What made BVS special was the building when people got crushed and there were actual consequences. In this, there's no consequences. The younger sister crushes buildings and no one got crushed. You're telling me she didn't kill anybody? Overall, I give it a 6.5. There's a few standout moments and cool scenes, but they're overshadowed by predictable and formulaic moments and loads of plot holes. Like I said, there's no consequences. It was predictable, safe, and pretty joyless. It does a decent job of capturing a love of superheroes inclusion and the importance of family, belonging, 
um, knowing one's true potential, but not as well as the first film. But stay tuned for the post credit and after credit scenes. Uh, the movie will be released in theaters March 17th, and let me know your thoughts.